Have you ever found yourself stretched too thin? Have you ever felt both overworked and underutilized? Busy but not productive? Like you're always in motion but never getting anywhere? If you answered yes to any of those, you're not alone. I know this because I too was there not that long ago. Hello and welcome to the Essentialism Academy. I am your instructor, Greg McEwen. Well done for being here. I'm delighted to have you on this journey with me. If you have read Essentialism or listened to my other courses, you're familiar with a pivotal experience I had in my life the day my daughter was born. It just so happened that the same day I was under pressure to attend an important client meeting for my employer. As I struggled to fulfill both of my responsibilities as a husband and a new parent, as well as a reliable employee, I was faced with a difficult decision. As you may know, to my shame, I left my wife and our old daughter in the hospital to attend the meeting. That experience was one that changed my life. It made me wonder why otherwise intelligent people make the choices they make in their personal and professional lives. Why is it that we have so much more ability inside of us than we often choose to utilize? And how can we make the choices that allow us to tap into more of that potential inside ourselves and in people everywhere? Over the years, I've worked with hundreds of organizations and thousands of individuals, helping them to focus on less but better. From that experience, I've come to realize I'm not the only one who struggled to prioritize essential over the non-essential. I remember working with one particularly driven executive who got into technology at a young age and loved it. He was quickly rewarded for his knowledge and passion with more and more opportunities. By the time I met him, he was hyperactive, trying to learn it all, trying to do it all. He seemed to find a new obsession, in fact, every day, sometimes every hour. And in the process, he lost his ability to discern the vital few from the trivial many. Everything was important. And as a result, he was stretched thinner and thinner. He was making a millimeter progress in a million directions. He was overworked and underutilized. And that's when I sketched out one simple image for him. He stared at it for the longest time. Then he said rather reflectively, this is the story of my life. Then I sketched another image for him. I asked what would happen if we could figure out the one thing you could do that would make the highest contribution. And he responded sincerely, that really is the question. Yes, that is the question. And together through this course, we're going to try to answer that singular question for you. You see, there are two ways we can think about and approach life. The first is the well-established method of trying to do everything, to be everything to everyone, to just fit one more thing into our overscheduled lives. And the result is running about from one thing to the next, majoring sometimes in minor things. I call this approach the non-essentialist approach one that is focused on the trivial many rather than the vital few. But there's a second way, a way in which we eschew the non-essential. Instead, we explore our lives, find what really matters, focus solely on those things. We eliminate the non-essential tasks that simply fill our lives but leave us unsatisfied. This is the essentialist approach to life, and it is one you must purposefully seek. Today, we see non-essentialism everywhere. Several trends have combined to create a perfect non-essentialist storm, in fact. Uh, they include too many choices, social pressure, and the false idea that we can have it all. Over the last decade, our choices have increased exponentially. And in the midst of this explosion, we have lost sight of the most important ones. For the first time, the preponderance of choice has overwhelmed our ability to manage it. We have lost our ability to filter what is important and what isn't. Add to this the increase of outside influences on our decisions, and we have the recipe for a disaster. The barrier for others to share their opinion about what we should be focusing on has all but disintegrated. We constantly see and hear how we should live in our lives on Facebook feeds, on Instagram stories. It's not just information overload, it is opinion overload. Combine each of these with the false but commonly held idea that we can have it all, and it's easy to see that we are primed for the non-essential life. 
When we don't purposefully and deliberately choose where to focus our energies and time, other people, our bosses, colleagues, our clients, even our family sometimes, will choose for us. And before long, we'll have lost sight of everything that is meaningful and important. So what are we to do with this? What can we do? Are we doomed to spend our lives pursuing things that don't really matter? Are we destined to arrive at the end of our lives wishing we had dared live a life true to ourselves? Of course, the answer to this question is a resounding no. There is a way out. And the way out is the way of the essentialist. There is tremendous freedom in learning that we can eliminate the non-essentials, that we are no longer controlled by other people's agendas, and that we get to choose. With that invincible power, we can discover our highest point of contribution, not just to our lives or careers, but to the world. When you're ready, let's begin.